D'Alembert's paradox, formulated in 1752, sent fluid mechanics from start into a paralysis lasting 256 years until the paradox was finally resolved in 2008. D'Alembert's paradox compares the mathematical prediction of zero drag or resistance to motion in fluids with very small viscosity, like air and water, with the observation of most substantial drag in air and water. D'Alembert's paradox caused a split from start between theory and practice, as expressed by Nobel laureate Cyril Hinshelwood, into theoretical mathematical fluid mechanics, explaining phenomena which cannot be observed, zero drag, and practical fluid mechanics or hydraulics observing phenomena which cannot be explained, substantial drag. A split between theory and practice is a characteristic of pseudoscience. D'Alembert found his paradox by analyzing certain solutions to the Euler equations, describing slightly viscous incompressible flow formulated by Euler in 1752. D'Alembert considered so-called potential solutions, which are time-independent solutions with the flow velocity being the gradient of a potential satisfying Laplace's equation, thus a harmonic function. A potential solution satisfies the Euler equations expressing incompressibility and Newton's second law and a slip boundary condition at a solid wall as a model of the small friction of slightly viscous flow. To see the paradox, let us now consider potential flow around a circular cylinder as a possible flow of a slightly viscous fluid like air or water. Here we see a section of potential flow around the circular cylinder from left to right, with the arrows giving the velocity and the color the pressure, with high pressure at attachment of the flow in the front, and surprisingly, the same high pressure at separation in the back, resulting in zero drag. This is the mystery of potential flow. It satisfies the Euler equations with the same attachment and separation pattern, but it has zero drag and thus is unphysical. Something is fundamentally wrong about the potential solution, but it satisfies the Euler equations and they cannot be wrong because they express Newton's second law, incompressibility and small viscosity. The equations are right, but the solution is wrong. D'Alembert could not understand what was wrong, and he had to give up, simply stating his paradox without having any clue to solution. It seems to me that the theory, potential flow, developed in all possible rigor, gives, at least in several cases, a strictly vanishing resistance, a singular paradox, which I leave to future geometers to elucidate. Nobody else could solve it. Euler couldn't solve it. Laplace couldn't solve it. Cauchy could not solve it. Not even Poisson could solve it. The resolution of D'Alembert's paradox is attributed to Ludwig Prantl, named the father of modern fluid mechanics, who in an eight-page sparsely typed conference report presented at the Mathematics Congress in Heidelberg in 1904, suggested that what is wrong with the Euler solution is that it satisfies a slip boundary condition, modeling zero friction. Prantl insisted that the boundary condition at a solid wall should be no slip, which disqualified the potential solution and thus removed the paradox of zero drag of the potential solution. A no slip boundary condition forms a boundary layer, and Prantl suggested that a boundary layer may cause flow separation at the crest of the flow, giving rise to a turbulent wake with low pressure causing drag. Prantl's resolution is thus based on 1. Disqualify the potential solution because of slip. 2. Suggest that no slip with boundary layer causes separation at the crest 
causing a turbulent wake with drag. But one is not correct since slip models small viscosity and two is not correct because real slightly viscous flow does not separate at the crest. Prandtl's resolution of d'Alembert's paradox is thus incorrect. The correct resolution was not given until 2008 and then revealed the secret of flight. You can view the correct resolution of d'Alembert's paradox in the video New Theory of Flight. The correct resolution was published in the Journal of Mathematical Fluid Mechanics by Hoffman and Johnson in 2008.